25th of June 2023. Welcome, everybody. I'm Dana Durnford, the uh, nuclear proctologist.org, and you can call it 709 589 4406. 4406. Everybody had a great day, great weekend, if that's possible. It always takes us in one moment to get up and running. It's so much to get done in such a short period of time. We're good to go. And let's get after it. Got tons of stuff to try to get through. Uh, we got a poll tonight. So the official story. Let me talk about that for one second. That came out a couple over the last couple of weeks is now they're claiming that these nuclear meltdowns. There's there's actually four of them. I'll show it to you. I'll show them to you in a moment. Uh, this was from the last show. A group of nuclear experts says the total amount of radiation is approximately 2.2 grams. 2.2 grams. So that's the original footage. Now, you're talking millions and millions of pounds per building. What you're looking at is just reactor three and four. And at the top of it were decades of reactor cores they're all gone. So we got a poll to try to help have this conversation. Did the uh, Fukushima nuclear meltdowns release millions of pounds of used fuel rods, which are the most lethal things in human capacity, into the land, sea, and the air? So fish, the official story is everything is in the tanks. The official story is there's a thousand tanks. We counted the tanks and we have zillions of pictures over the last 12 years of this site. I only counted 750 if you include the small ones. So does it look like 2.2 grams got out of these buildings? Or does it look like the entire inventory got out? Because it matters. It matters so much. And it matters for the species that don't have a voice in particular. And what really matters, unfortunately, is I'm the only person on the entire planet having this conversation. I'm the only one on the entire planet asking that question. <laughs> I'm the only one on the entire planet showing you those pictures. I'm not kidding you. I'm the only one on the entire planet that is advocating that these buildings are destroyed, and here's the documentation. If that doesn't scare the living daylights out of you, <coughs> welcome to the madness, because you must have just learned about this over the last few days. And the show just started a few minutes ago. We have 24 votes already asking or establishing that Fukushima lost millions of pounds. And so this, we covered a lot of stories in the last two weeks with this narrative that only 2.2 grams, 2.2 grams got out of the destroyed buildings. The reactor three, the plume covered the entire planet in 27 days after the tsunami. The reactors didn't blow up, all of them finished blown up for until the 16th. So the model is based on 21 days, basically, of radioactive fallout covering the entire planet. And we have many of these models, but we also have the documentation of showing up worldwide. And so why would they come out now and claim only 2.2 grams got out of these 
um, these buildings. So at the top of the building, there's decades and decades of reactor cores, and there's two fuel pools. That's one there, and there's one over there. The reactor core is at the top of the building, and there's nothing left of the building. The, the buildings are supposed to be uh, 19 stories tall, of 65 meters, 190 feet tall. So there was four buildings, by the way, that lost their inventories. There was Reactor 1, and we know Reactor 1 lost its inventory because... You can imagine this is a 190 foot tall building, 65 meter tall building, 19 story skyscraper. And that's the plume from the detonation. It burnt continuously for several days. The same thing with reactor two. It was the only building that looked like it's still intact even though we know it's not. We know the reactor core liquefied. We've never seen that in the history of uranium. We see the heat signature up there. This is a total loss. And, 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 and the inventories are stunning, the amount we're talking about. There's reactor three. Again, there's nothing left of the building, but officially only 2.2 grams got out of these buildings. Now the reason they're saying it is they don't want the generations to blame the nuclear industry for the extermination of all the species. That's exactly what's going on. And now they know this, we can't deny it anymore. And we've done the research expeditions for 12 years. Uh, when you look at these two buildings and you listen to the scientists, the universities, the academics, worldwide, symmetrically, try to convince you that only 2.2 grams got out of this, there, we are in real trouble. We're in so much trouble, it's probably hard for the average person to comprehend it, even though it shouldn't be. I'm going to play a clip of only four of the mass media is that pretend that they're in the building to your left. Where I'm standing is on top of what used to be reactor building number four. The whole of this building was blown apart by a huge explosion. We are here inside reactor four at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant that was severely crippled during the earthquake and tsunami of 2011. ...of the decommissioning work taking place here in reactor four. At the end of our tour, we were checked for radiation exposure. In four hours, I received the equivalent of less than a chest x-ray. 1,500 highly radioactive fuel rods inside this pool. They've got to move them outside of this reactor. <laughs> these are lunatics, is the only way you can describe these people. And uh, they're going to take the whole planet with them. So if you haven't, consider liking, subscribing, consider notification, and consider punching the nuclear industry in the nose if you ever come across them. Not physically, but just yell at them, call them scumbags. And everything will be magically better, right? The billion pound elephant in the room is Fukushima and 80 years of nuclear industry. Come on, you guys, get back in the cage. Stop pulling around. I'm trying to do a show here. <laughs> hey, let's listen to something intelligent. Let's listen <laughs> to the minions farting. <laughs> <laughs> You'll understand in a second what I'm doing. That's <laughs> 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 nuclear, nuclear experts. <laughs> Get serious again. So why the hell would the medias worldwide pretend they're in a building that no longer exists? Why are they pretending only 2.2 grams got out of the building? <laughs> but that's not what they're claiming. They're claiming 2.2 grams will get out of the building over the next 30 years. The plumes covered the planet. This model is 19.5 days, 468 hours. 
This is only based on a, on a fraction of what actually came out of the building. Your media has just spent 80 years telling you that radiation is like eating a banana, like walking in sunshine, flying on an airplane. These are patent false assertions. All righty, we got to So the Zephyphoria nuclear power plant in Ukraine, all these reactors, as far as I know, I could be wrong, but my understanding, because we covered this a lot, is the reactors were all shut down, so they don't need a massive amount of water, right? But that being said, this is the reservoir, and this is over the next couple of weeks. And it's a total drain. Right? That's a total, not a total drain, but the equivalent of a total drain, isn't it? Isn't that stunning? Just look how big it is. This is incredible. And, and look at the farms around it. That scares the shit out of me when I see stuff like that. News Navigator never fails to terrify me with their hatred of humanity came out with an article that, and we've covered fraction of this over the years. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, I gotta go to the other one. So, I'm just looking for the map of the no-go zone that they're talking about. I got it right here and everything else at the same time, so just bear with me. <coughs> Bingo. So it gets confusing, but um, here we go. So what is the new returning zone to be created in the so-called disaster hit Fukushima? We got a lot of stories to get through. So what they're going to do and been doing is they're opening, this is the no-go zone. Originally, it kind of looks like this. So the last couple of years, they opened little fractions of the zone for anybody that has been properly propagandized by the universities, the hateful universities and the hateful medias and government agencies, manipulated into going into a no-go zone. Now, and this story is really tells it actually, which is unusual. So the, the Minichi Shimbu answers some common questions readers have about the new resident zones. Now remember, this is a death zone, no go zone. And you go in there in paper suits and pretend everything is okay for some reason, which is the homeless have become uninhabitable as a result of the nuclear power plant accident. But officially, only 2.2 grams got out of the buildings. But all these zones are uninhabitable because of radioactive fallout. But so is Canada and the United States, if you actually look at the documentation. Due to the accident, parts of seven municipalities, and I just showed you a picture, I'll show you again. In Fukushima Prefecture, were designated so-called difficult to return zones. Now the proper terminology for it is a nuclear wasteland, but if you call it a nuclear wasteland, you can't call it a return zone, right? So you should hate the nuclear industry just for thinking and acting that particular way, a sadistic way. And it's not illegal to poison you, that's why they're doing this. The Congress in the United States and the Parliament in Canada and in the United Kingdom and Australia, New Zealand, stuff like this, they don't have the authority to make it illegal to poison you with radiation. Only the non-regulatory agencies, the nuclear regulation authorities, which are the non-regulatory agencies, by the way, have the authority to make it illegal. But the Congress and parliaments and diets have the authority to make it illegal to poison you with everything else on the entire planet except for radiation. The new returning zones are set to include homes, roads, meeting places deemed necessary for the daily lives of those who wish to return to the nuclear wasteland. 
And decontamination, which can't be carried out in a nuclear wasteland, by the way, will be carried out allegedly to reduce the radiation levels in those areas where people want to go back to. And then the evacuation orders over the areas, those little tiny areas in the nuclear wasteland itself, which is airborne radiation on a whole different scale. Some people have returned, which is just a fraction of the original population, like a percent or something. And so they allocated now 2.3 billion US to decontaminate the nuclear wastelands, like only the houses and the garden is what they're talking about. And they'll actually talk about that here, based on the wishes of the local government, which doesn't exist anymore because the population ran away, and appropriately. Such areas were established in six parts, in parts, P-A-R-T-S, parts, of six towns and villages. So you can't decontaminate a little fraction of a nuclear wasteland. It's immediately contaminated within minutes again. Between June uh, last year and May of this year, evacuation orders there were lifted one after another. And when the Great Eastern earthquake hit, there were about 16,000 people living in that area. Now there's 200 people. And these people have bought into the propaganda and believe that somehow it's harmless or innocuous or benign. Re reconstruction bases are set up in clusters private homes and around train stations. But in the case of new returning residential zones, the setting is likely to limit to areas around the home of those who wish to return. So, to no, so you can go around the home, the garden, but not in the community. So when you drive to your home in the community, you can't stop anywhere. You have to drive right to your garden and basically go in your house. So that's actually murder. And in the case of new returning residents, it's likely to be limited to areas surrounding the homes of those who wish to return, who those who don't know any better, to those. Since it remains difficult to relive in, which is a nuclear wasteland, it's not difficult to live in, it's a no-go zone, period. It's a nuclear wasteland. And so anybody that advocates people going back there should be jailed for life. They're obviously insane. They're put in a mental institution. And if they're an academic or a scientist, they should be jailed for life because it's murder. And when evacuation order has only been partially lifted, there's a strong demand for uncon unconditional decontamination throughout the entire area, which you can't. You ran out of homeless and the uh, victims of society and immigrants who don't speak the language to do that work a long time ago. Nuclear scientists have never went to Fukushima. Allegedly, a few weeks ago, North South Korea nuclear scientists alleged that they went there. That's the first time in 12 years anybody out of Japan, besides Japan, has ever went there. So back to that story again for one second. Local nuclear experts dismissed the Fukushima water concerns. So think about the, how Japan filed a complaint against South Korea. And remember, we covered that uh, in 2015. Because South Korea, the World Trade Organization, which is United Nations, which shouldn't even exist, right? Eisenhower described them as a military industrial complex because you got 195 militaries and NATO's 28 militaries. And they don't have any sovereignty over your countries, but they manage to buy people in your country that makes important decisions and are able to influence your daily and destroy many facets of your life through that influence. The World Trade Organization ruled against Korea's import ban from the nuclear wasteland in 2018. <coughs> so you had food in a nuclear, let me explain that to you because it, the problem with this story is it never stops getting more bizarre the further down you go. 
So they're growing food right alongside a one-ton bags of radiation in a no-go zone, a nuclear wasteland, surrounded by nuclear wastelands. Try making that up on your own. <clears throat> so 55 countries banned the food from 14 prefectures. Think of those provinces like in Canada or states in America. These are huge, right? And, and those in particular were the breadbasket of the Asian countries, but it was also exported to your country. So 55 countries banned the food for a decade. Not Canada, but actual real countries. Canada, despicable, disgusting, revolting Canada, removed all restrictions after 93 days, and the Canadian media didn't report on it. And Japan couldn't ship the deadly food, and we're talking billions of pounds a year. They couldn't ship the food anywhere only to Canada. And so Canada has been devastated, completely devastated by diseases and cancers and illnesses and autoimmune deficiencies and injuries. There's 1,800 diseases, 1,800 diseases from radiation. 1800 and illnesses and autoimmune deficiencies there's heart problems liver problems lung problems respiratory pituitary thyroid adrenaline alzheimer's dementia autism diabetes down syndrome schizophrenia there's an incredible absurd ridiculous amount of devastating illnesses that wrecks everybody it touches it wrecks the families the victims All nuclear power plants need two external gas, oil, and coal plants dedicated to them. Two of them. They need a dedicated to them to build it, to run it for 50 years, and to decommission it for 60 or 100 years. So we've got a call coming in already. Sounds like we got Navi in the United Kingdom, I think. Hello. Hello. Uh, hello. Did you button dial me or something? Hello. 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 Is it Diana? Yeah. Turn turn off your uh, YouTube. Turn the volume off because you're. You're, you got a really bad audio, but you're across the pond. So go ahead. Hi. I can't understand anything you're saying. Try again, please. Hello? Hello, can you hear me now? I can, yeah, go ahead. I'm just wondering, my question is, why don't the Geiger counters all around the world show an increase in, in background radiation? Why aren't they or why are they? Why aren't they? There's, there's no report that... Uh, 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 so you're saying there's no radioactive fallout, are you? <laughs> I, I don't. I, I, I can see the loss of the species just around my area. Yep. It's just kind of catastrophic. Right. Catastrophic. Do you have a Geiger counter? I'm following you for that. Do, do you have a Geiger no, I counter? Have a Geiger counter. Sorry? No, I don't. I'm one, I've been following you for about six years. Well, the, the, like the Geiger counter doesn't show alphas, neutrons, betas, x-rays for starters. And Geiger counters are not very efficient, right? You need spectrometers, you need very expensive equipment to find the radiation. And we have a few people that will, um, that have that equipment and been calling in for many years. 
But we, we've documented yeah. the radioactive fallout. We've documented free. Now, I normally run a Geiger counter in my screen. And lately, I'm not doing it. But I've been doing it for over a decade. You're familiar with that, obviously. And so Geiger, yeah. Geiger counters are registering it, but they're only registering a fraction. Geiger counters are not meant, they're meant to, um, the industry controls all of that, right? So it's, it's just meant to make money. It's not meant to actually show you the documentation, but uh, okay. So I'll, I'll, ad I'll, ad I'll address that right now. Is there anything else? So on the screen right now, I have rain with 20 million particles of radioactive iodine, 131 per liter, in Canada in a study. And another study from Ottawa, Canada, of 220 million atoms per liter of iodine, 129. But my Geiger counter can't register that stuff. So, like, but if you find 220 million atoms of iodine, 129, and they did, then there's then the biggest byproduct of radiated fuel rods is curium isotopes, and curium is not going to show up in the Geiger yeah. counters. So they're not going to do a study and show you the animosity equivalent of the curium, because they do this through a mathematical extrapolation. So they can find certain iodines in some cesium, right? And then you would do a mathematical equation. Okay, my friend. Anything else? Um. Yeah, I'm, I'm very keen to uh, see where this leads. I don't think we can last much longer without these species. Well, I, like you say, uh, I'll, I'll address that at the end of the show because I got some pictures we're going to go through from research I've been doing for the last number of days. Okay, thank you, though. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for answering that question. Yep, now we'll, we'll do more on that in a minute, Harry. Take care now. You're welcome. Take care. Yeah. Bye bye. And so the audio is really bad, eh? I don't know why it's so bad, but sometimes that happens. So 220 million atoms per liter of radioactive fallout in Canada. Now, a lot, now anything in Ottawa, everything west of the Rocky Mountains in Canada is going to wash towards the Atlantic. Stuff around Ottawa where that particular study was done, that's going to wash down to St. Lawrence. It's going to come all the way out into the eastern regions. So, <clears throat> and uh, I had a few trolls attacking me over the weekend saying, well, where's all the radiation? Of course, no, we're coming back. Hi there, you got more questions? Hello, Donna. How are you doing? Hi, dear. This is a different... Okay, go ahead. Well, are we, are we online now? I'm not looking. I'm just speaking on my phone. Sorry? I was just wondering, have you got any good questions that I could be asking um, Hinkley Point C when I'm on phone them up every day? Yeah, you can, ask, you can ask them why are they surrounded by farms. <laughs> uh, I've already done that one. <laughs> have you? Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. uh, any, any other ones that might upset them? Sorry? Any others? Any other questions you got that might sort of make them go red or upset them, you know? Yeah, ask them did 2.2 grams get out of Fukushima or did they lose the fuel pools? And so the pictures, I showed okay. you the pictures. You should take a, um, you should yeah, yeah. like take a screen capture and print it out. And don't show it to them right yeah. away. Ask them, did they lose the fuel pools? And when they say no to you, yeah. give them the picture of the destroyed buildings and ask them to point out where the fuel pools are to. I can't give them pictures because I'm throwing them directly on telephone. Okay, so you can send them an email, um, though, in advance, they, maybe? They, when you they get they them on the telephone, get an email. I don't know if that'll work for you. They never answer the emails, but when I get through to one of my seven phones, eventually answer if you're not saying so yeah thanks for that anyway no hang on hang on hang, hang on hang on one second oh, oh. if you got the time all right so you, like you know united kingdom what they they asked them why did they close nine thousand four hundred firms after chernobyl melted down 
Yeah, Chernobyl have asked them loads of questions about that. And so when when, when, when they, because they, they probably don't even know themselves, and so when they answer yeah. that, ask them if they closed 9,400 farms after Chernobyl, which was a single reactor, how many farms did yeah. they close after Fukushima, which lost four reactors and eight fuel pools? <laughs> like, if nothing yeah. else... Well, if well, Go ahead. What they're um, implying when I'm speaking to them now is, what what are these questions to do with England? Well, because and I'm saying, oh, it's got a lot to do with England, really, you know. Well, because the e English the scientists have claimed there was no fallout. In English scientists claimed there was no harm, like uh, um, yeah. Geraldine Thomas from Imperial College has repeatedly claimed there was no adverse effects. It never lost a fuel pools. Uh, it was. It's like a banana, and oh, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. like yeah. ask him how many yeah. how many bananas <laughs> how how many bananas did fall on United Kingdom so that they closed nine thousand four hundred farms. Okay. Uh, I'm like like I, I, I hear what you're saying. I, you have to give me an <laughs> yeah. You have to kind of give me an advance warning so I can dig up the information and put it on the screen for you next time. Yeah, yeah, I'll, 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 um, I'll come back to this. Like you can, call, you can yeah. call me, call me in the daytime or something, and let me know you're going to call in the show, yeah, yeah. and I'll prepare a fold because yeah. I got folders on United Kingdom, in right? Fact, in fact, in fact, what we could do, right? I could phone you when I phone them, do a conference call, and both of us win them up. Sure. Could we do that? Let's work out to do that. One yeah, day. we can do it if you want to. Absolutely. As long as I know what's happening, as long as I know what's happening, as long as I know what's happening, I can have, I, I need a little yeah. bit of prep time to get the folders ready. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, to get the information it's, that we want to ask them, right? It's, it's very, very interesting, wasn't it, you know? Well, the, the, uh, like, I really disrespect the United Kingdom nuclear industry. They're really vicious. I do. They're, yeah. in, like, and I so I'm really, I'm really uh, proud and really happy that you're doing what you're doing. UKGB absolutely test them. I'm English. You're, you're doing, you're, yeah. Oh, you're English. Okay. Well, you're doing, a, you're doing the right thing. Go ahead. I'm British. My apologies. I didn't realize that. Yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And I'll let you get on with your show. Bye. And, uh, thanks okay. Yeah. Thanks yeah. yeah. Reach out to me anytime. Oh, I'm on the way. My t shirt hasn't arrived yet. Hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> It'll show up. Okay, my yeah, friend. Well, okay. Yeah, thank you. Really? Appreciate it. That's a great call. And so when you're talking about a different country, I, I'm happy to um, have a whole list of questions ready for you. I just need a little bit of advance so I can put it all together. And we have folders on this, but you've got to dig through it to get the appropriate questions. And when you're talking about a Pacific nuclear power plant, even if I get a, a little, like an hour in advance before the show, I can have a a substantial amount of documentation on that nuclear power plant because we've been at this for a very long time. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so I just want to go back to the first caller's question because that's a great question. How come the Geiger counters are not registering like 220 million atoms per liter? Well, the Geiger counter can't measure iodine-129. The Geiger counters can't measure the curium, which is the biggest byproduct of the radioactive fuel rods, and you need lead shielding 20 times thicker than you do for the plutonium, which is named after the devil. Uh, the Geiger counters can't register the plutonium, it can't register the betas, it can't register alphas, it can't register neutrons, it can't register the x-rays. The x-rays are created by the radiation fallout they don't mingle the different alphas, gammas, betas, neutrons, and these are different types of isotopes that are emitting um, energy at the speed of light almost every second. So how much energy does it take to make something go to speed of light or something else, and how much energy does it take to make it do that every second? Okay, so bear with me. And uh, 
my God, I got no idea what I got done with them. I got a brain freeze all of a sudden. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Hang on. Well, this should be it here. And we're almost ready. I think that should work. There we go. So I went through a lot of work to gather up academic studies of radioactive fallout worldwide. I'm just gonna run you through it. So this was, they, they were forced to acknowledge it, right? They covered it up, but they were forced to acknowledge it. And Canada was more liberal and, the, uh, you know, they had more latitude. So they admitted 220 million atoms per liter sustained radioactive fallout. They admitted 20 million particles of iodine-131 per liter. And they tried to cover it up, don't get me wrong, there were studies shown over a million becquerels a square meter on the west coast. And there's another important one. Let me show you that one before we get started here. Because you need context before we go down these roads. And I have to do that just in case you're not familiar with the subject, just to try to get you on the right page. So there was another study by France, and France done a couple of studies. First, let me show you the radioactive fallout from France based on 16 days of radioactive fallout. Now, they, were, they weren't, now I showed you the destroyed buildings at the beginning. So these inventories that you're seeing from the radioactive fallout, which is covering the entire planet in 16 days, is not based upon <clears throat> is not based upon the melted reactors I showed you. But that was, Fra that was France's study, right? The model of the radioactive fallout oh, at 16 days. But this is a study on the model of cesium-137 from, from the same institution, the IRSN from France. And this one is based on 1,000 to 10,000 times radioactive fallout after Fukushima. And this is the cesium-137, so very, so again, right, you got the iodine-129, you got the cesium, or the iodine-129 with a 15 million year half-life, you have the, the cesium radioactive fallout, a million, 10 million times weapons fallout peak, you have, <coughs> there's, there's a, um, bear with me, so then there's, we have uh, radioactive fallout models of the plato plutonium-239, which is probably the worst plutonium fallout, right? Uh, when it comes to plutonium, that's the nasty one. That, that burns a hole through the children's lungs, ends up in their bones and mutates their stem cells. And uh, same thing with the animals and birds and mammals. And this is where we see mass dive. This is another plume of the neptunium-239 dispersals of radioactive fallout. We got tons of study on the sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs. So you got hydrogen, and these are very hot particles, just a single one can inflict severe damage. So you got neptunium, you got plutonium, you got cesiums, you got iodines 129, you got iodine uh, 131. So you got, and there's so many of these models we show them pretty regularly of the radioactive fallout the xenon models. Now these are backed up by actual studies of radioactive fallout worldwide. So I'll, let me run you through some of that. <clears throat> We're a bit off the, the beaten pad of what I would, had planned tonight, but that's fine. We got a couple of callers. So let's address that because that's important to me. And it's a legitimate question when people ask you, how come the Geiger counters are not registering it? And the reason is, first off, the Geiger counters are garbage. You need to spend twenty to fifty thousand dollars to get the real stuff, but at least three or four or five thousand to get something 
that can find different spectrums of the radiation. But at least you got a baseline. Any Geiger counter is at least a baseline. Anything made after 2011 is suspect. Because the industry uh, has this legacy of being um, absurdly vicious. So the Baltic Sea, I'm going to go through Fukushima fallout in particular. I can do the same thing for Chernobyl, of course. Modeling of the marine radionuclides in the marine now, in Baltic seas. You have uh, the northern hemisphere uh, westerly shown the radioactive fallout. And then you have suggestions of global and local can cancer risk from Fukushima, global cancer risk. So the only reason they're going to suggest something like that. And here's NOAA's model, so it kind of give you context of why they're talking about global cancer. This model is based on 40 days of radioactive fallout. And this is uh, twice the speed of the government's model. I just speed it up for time constraints. And this model, after 40 days, is covering the northern hemisphere. But it, the actual plume covers the entire planet, right? And we know this because of the Neptunian models and the Plutonian models. By the way, Neptunium-239, when it decays, it decays to Plutonium-239 with a 27,000-year half-life. And there's 10 half-lives. Uh, this is absurd studies talking about the behavior of just cesium, but there's a... Uh, a thousand fission products you need to worry about. If you find cesium, you're going to find a thousand other fission products. Your Geiger counter might find, say, 10 becquels or 30 or 100 becquels of cesium. You have to multiply around 600 to get all the other radionuclides. So they're burning the, they can't get rid of the ash from the incinerators. So that's dirty bombs because they're burning it. They can't get rid of, the sediment from the filtration from the water reclamation facilities. They can't get rid of the sewage because it's also too radioactive. And they can't get rid of the ash from the incinerators because it's too radioactive. And so the cancer rates just in Japan by 2012, within the first year, There was 865,000 extra cancers in the first year. Canada has seen similar because uh, they shipped the food from Japan to Canada. Nobody else would take it, only Canada. After 93 days, Canada removed all restrictions with no checks whatsoever. Canada was captured by the nuclear industries in the 50s, maybe the 40s, who knows. But Canada has basically been... The universities and the medias were captured and the regulatory agencies by the 60s. Complete capture of it. Ca Canada is not the country people think it is. We have been captured by this industry and destroyed by it through the food chain. Decontamination of radioactivity from contaminated vegetables derived from Fukushima. You can't decontaminate vegetables. So th these kind of studies frighten me because they're being used to manipulate countries. Another study that frightened me was this study here. It was in the nuclear wasteland in 2012, and they suggested reducing radiation exposures using commonly available objects. So they were talking about using cardboard, using uh, foam boards, wooden boards, in order to shield your rectum, basically, and your testicles from the radiation exposures. So what they should be talking about was moving you editor immediately. You can't shield somebody from radiation exposure by using magazines. And here's basically the long short of it. Newspaper, uh, th one millimeter thick, uh, newspaper, 16 sheets is one milli th milli millimeter thick each, I guess. Corrugated cardboard, four millimeters. Two layers is eight millimeters. Magazines, uh, 25 millimeters. And, and foam boards and stuff like this to shield you from the radiation rather than moving you out of the nuclear wasteland. Because when you're talking about doing stuff like this, that means you're uh, inhaling it, you're consuming it, you're washing in it, you're showering, 
you're washing your clothes, your dishes and this stuff, your baby formula is being mixed with it. And there's um, 1,800 diseases from this stuff. This is the very last thing you want your loved ones to come in contact with. Your children are 100 times more vulnerable. Insects and birds and mammals and animals are 1,000 times more vulnerable than a child. And a child is 100 times more valuable, vulnerable than an adult consuming the same amount of water or food. The author declared they have no conflict of interest. If you've got no conflict of interest, why didn't you ask the people to be moved out of the nuclear wasteland, see? Why would you suggest they sit on newspapers or cardboard and magazines to protect themselves from radiation? Because you can't protect yourself from radiation. If, if you've got to do something like this, it's everywhere. It's dominant in your environment. You need to get out of there immediately and sue the nuclear industry for harming you. Now, in Luxembourg, in Germany, they passed a law a few years ago that you can sue the nuclear power plant 30 years later after, even if it's closed for 30 years, you can still sue if you got sick 30 years later. If you work at Hanford in the United States, nuclear reservation for eight hours, a single shift for eight hours, you're entitled to a pension or a payout and health care. That's how dangerous this stuff actually is. You don't have to prove you got sick from Hanford. Say if you worked there 50 years ago and you got lung problems or all kinds of diseases or whatever, you don't have to prove Hanford caused it. You just got to prove you worked there for eight hours 50 years ago. That's how dangerous this actually is. They recognize it by doing that. Observation of Fukushima fallout in, you guessed it, Great Britain. And uh, the second caller was from England. The first caller, I'm not sure if, I think they were, did they mention they were from Britain? I can't remember. My apologies to the caller. Xena, now I put flags in this just for badness to remind myself of how much work I actually done. Detection of xenon from Fukushima nuclear plant in the upper troposphere above Germany. Well, in the United States was, and Canada, it was 450,000 times above detection levels. You're supposed to abandon the west coast of the northern hemisphere. Radioactive contamination monitoring, and that David Suzuki even acknowledged that. Radioactive contamination monitoring for the Korean public following a nuclear accident. Uh, dry disposition velocity over Spain of cesiums after Fukushima. Artificial radionuclides in Russia because of Fukushima. Radioactive fallout in Romania because of Fukushima. Radioactive fallout in Darwin because of Fukushima. Radioactive fallout in Italy because of Fukushima. But radioactive fallout in France because of Fukushima. Radioactive fallout in Vietnam because of Fukushima. Radioactive fallout in British Columbia because of Fukushima, and Lithuania, because of Fukushima, and Taiwan, because of Fukushima, radioactive fallout in Monaco, because of Fukushima, radioactive fallout in Beijing, because of Fukushima, radioactive fallout in Greece, because of Fukushima, radioactive fallout in the Liberian Peninsula, because of Fukushima, radioactive fallout in European locations from multiple isotopes as usual, because of Fukushima, radioactive fallout in Poland because of Fukushima. And this is another model from France. It gives you context. And so I showed you all these studies of radioactive fallout covering the whole planet. This model shows the radioactive fallout dispersals of just a single isotope uh, over 27 days. So this is day 20. This is day 25 of fallout. It covers the entire planet. Now, just because the Geiger counter is not going to register the enormous amount of radiation doesn't mean it didn't happen, right? And we, show, we have all kinds of studies to show unequivocally it did. And we have studies showing, like just in Canada alone, Uh, huge numbers. This was the xenon uh, 133 fallout. This was uh, 20 million particles per liter. 
does rain fall by a single liter of fallout? By the way, this is, I think this one was a xenon radioactive fallout based on 20 days. The radiation never stops coming out of the reactors, by the way. This uh, report of 220 million atoms per liter, this is incontestable. This is unassailable. This is never going to go away. This, is live, this will be here long past the human experience, and it will saturate the thyroid glands of everything. But, but the most vulnerable species, like insects and birds and mammals and animals and everything else, and children, their thyroid glands are saturated uh, and everything else. But in particular, the th why the thyroid gland is so important is because when it's saturated uh, with these kind of brutal numbers, you're producing radioactive hormones. And that you're opening up a whoop-ass amount of illnesses and diseases and autoimmune deficiencies and injuries for all the species, not just humans. But it's going to show up in the species first. So first you're going to see uh, no, no insect-eating birds, and you're not going to see many insects. You'll see some, like the, predator, like the feeder insects, say um, mosquitoes. They feed trout, they feed birds, they feed frogs, they feed all kinds of species, right? And birds, birds in particular. Um, so if you don't have any predators, then they're gonna, they're, those populations will explode because they're the, they're the most prolific types of populations. But because the flowers are going to be sucking up radiation, then the bees will stop, uh, will end up having radio, they'll be going, bringing radioactive pollen back to the hive. And over a few generations, they'll stop reproducing. The same thing for the insects. So you got the cesium fallout recorded, documented at, at a million to 10 million times. And they're talking about a cubic meter of air. So it's impossible. So you're talking about whole body x-rays. And again, we have endless absurd amount of studies and documentation for all of my assertions. We have cancer rates. You know, like the, there's six and 10 Fukushima children with diabetes, but don't, they were expecting diabetes in the Fukushima children. But these are absurd. All of this is absurd stuff we're talking about. So I have all kinds of studies documenting the radioactive fallout. And then I have endless models of radioactive fallout. We'll move ahead to the meat and bones. I mean, this is just 22, 23 days of fallout. It never stopped coming out of Japan. So this is a real problem. And the world is living in denial. And there's no way forward when you're living in denial. And so you got to avoid certain things because of the bioaccumulation. So you got to avoid shellfish. But like we're on to, I'm studying radioactive fallout in the tidal zones and the migratory birds. We have the biggest migratory bird uh, spot on the planet. There's around 46 million migratory birds. Seabirds are supposed to come through here each year. And for the last uh, three years in particular, f well, almost four years, we've been studying the species on the east coast of Canada. We spent six years of doing research expeditions from Vancouver, British Columbia, to Alaska. Let me touch on that for one second for you so you can kind of comprehend the enormity of this equation. So we've done research, uh, and we're still doing research expeditions with this boat, which is busted up. I power washed the interior today because um, it was blowing too hard for me to go out and do any research. And I'm actually busted up uh, from multiple days in a row. We got nine days, I think, or 10 days punched in. But it's so difficult because I'm recovering from three heart attacks, and I had seven stints put in, so I'm not in very good health. Uh, but I'm doing way better, so I'm, I'm pretty happy. I recover, like, my, my breathing recovers quite rapidly now, but I'm, because I'm, I'm so bad out of shape from, now I got injured in a diving accident. I used to be a commercial diver. So I've done research expeditions all the way Alaska, year after year, and these are some of the boats that I was using. I currently only have those two Zodiacs. We got, we moved to the East Coast. We're doing well, we research the big one up. expeditions. 
Right. And what I discovered on the West Coast was just absolutely terrifying. We went into the tidal zones for the whole coastline. We meandered the whole coast for four to five months at a time for six years. And the reason we done that was we were hoping the species would come back because they were extinct. So the species to your left were exterminated. They no longer exist. And this, this was my stomping grounds. I dove this coastline for years and years and years. And, and what you're seeing is a total extinction. And what's left, uh, I took these pictures in the research expeditions. And the first year when we discovered, uh, there's of course 27,000 islands up here. So you're spending four to five months a year to meander through all the pinch points. And the pinch point is where the ocean comes into the coastline and it has to squeeze through the islands to get to the interior islands. And so the species to your left now are exterminated. We went back six years to see if they recovered. And we just, what I, we being me, I just meandered through the coastline. Those, I put GPSs with that documentations of all these places. And when I went in to these uh, exterminated areas, I took GPSs, uh, pictures of GPS, and I posted that up at my website with the pictures. So people could repeat the experiments. Nobody did, of course, that I know of. And so normally you can never land on the beaches because they would be covered in uh, football fields of these big purple and red sea urchins. And at one point I used to pick 20,000 of these a day in this same area, I might add, and in this area, and in that area, and in this area. I'm very familiar with all of this. So that was exterminated. Now, the east coast of Canada, because that was a tropical rainforest on the west coast, the east coast of Canada is different. But it did have mussels, it did have clams, it did have uh, sea urchins. And so normally the birds at low tide will rush into the tide zone and just spend hours. They got five hours now to, to gorge themselves on all kinds of uh, food. But shellfish are, are filter feeders. And so they bioaccumulate radiation about 125,000 times more than uh, fish do, and fish are really bad. So I've, I've done the research year after year after year for the Pacific, now we're doing the same thing on the East Coast. And what we're seeing is, because the East Coast didn't have this incredible, unbelievable diversity, it still had other amazing attributes about it. And so what I'm trying to do is get baselines, and over the summer, I'm going to be out there every day that I can manage it, doing the research to quantify any assertions down the road. And so hopefully we find millions of birds. Hopefully we find incredible diversity, and we can breathe a sign of relief. Unfortunately, that's not what we're seeing for the last number of years. Now, we're also doing expeditions on the interior where we're studying insects and spiders. We're seeing spiders on our houses and in our sheds, but we're not seeing them in our trees and our bushes. And the average person, when you ask them about it, can't comprehend the difference. They're, oh, you gotta check the house. There's lots there, lots out in the shed, they're huge. But, the, but they, they're caught up in their own little world. They're not listening. And if they go out and look in the trees and the bushes, they're not gonna find spiders. There should be about a half a million per acre. And the reason they're on your houses and buildings is because they're not sucking up radiation like trees and bushes and plants does. And the reason they're not tying on the trees and the bushes and the plants anymore is because they suck up radiation to the very tips where the spider sets up shops. And they can conceive the radiation, but a human can't. And they, and they also become sterile. And so over a few generations, a few years, they stop reproducing. So the ones that were reproducing are the ones that are in your homes and vehicles. And, you, and on the East Coast, one of the things I noticed the last couple of years in particular was the spider webs were all deformed. And at, at best, there's one or two insects in a spider web. And normally, I check the spider webs because that's how you figure out how, you know, what kind of species are in an area is you check spider webs, right? We can't find them. And we've crossed the province on the train tracks doing the research and couldn't find spiders. And a couple, two years ago, they took down my other site where I had 1,600 of these presentations. 
and 10 years of research expeditions. And so when I was out looking for spiders on the East Coast, uh, 400 miles out into the wilderness, they took down my site with no uh, strikes against my account. And this was the nuclear lobbying group at the Google, right? Yeah, I was so stiff today. And, I, and today was a shop day, working around the shop here and in the shed on the equipment and on uh, power washing the boat because it has been power washed the interior for quite a long couple of years now. And so it was pretty disgusting. We got that power washed and I'm going to paint the floor uh, when it dries out tomorrow or the next day. We got southwesterlies tomorrow and northerlies the day after. Um, I'm not sure. I'm, I might make it out tomorrow, but I won't be able to make it out the day after. And then it might take another day or two for the seas to come back down. Yesterday, the ground swells were bigger than the day before, despite the fact we got four days of westerlies, which means we had storms offshore, right? So those, those uh, they didn't affect me too much, but they affected me. Okay, let's get back. Now, like, this, they refuse to acknowledge this is real. Right, and they've, they've arrested me and gave me gag orders so I can't, uh, and I used to have to see a provincial court judge before I can do an article or an interview on certain, on the, the entities that were protected by the gag orders. And in fact, um, one of those entities was the Victoria Police Department, which is the private police force, uh, what they call the Queen's Police. It's a government police agency. And I wasn't even allowed to mention them for three and a half years, which was the maximum the gag orders that they can give me. And uh, if I had my, had my time back, but I was doing research expeditions at the same time. If I had my time back, I should have sued them. But they'd done a slap suit against me where they dragged me into a different jurisdiction in the court 16 times. And managed to secure a conviction, but all they wanted was gag orders. That was the only thing they were interested in. And we went through um, 16, 17 lawyers. Not one of them would touch my case because they had all got their degrees at that same uh, institution that was leading the charge against me. So we got a poll tonight. Do you think that 2.2 grams got out of this building or do you think maybe all of it got out of the building? Well, the, the right answer is all of it. And so the, the poll is, did Fukushima nuclear meltdowns release millions of pounds of the vicious, vicious uh, used fuel rods into the land and sea? And it atomizes and aerosols it, and we call it radioactive fallout. And when you breathe this in, this is a catastrophic event. Your body attacks the radiation, whether you're a child or an adult, a bird or an insect or whatever, your body attacks the radiation for the rest of your life with white blood cells. That's going to displace your red blood cells. Your red blood cells carry oxygen and nutrition. So the more you get into you, eventually you got so much white blood cells, they call that leukemia. But before that shows up, you had already compromised your immune system. And because radiation is permanent, so your body permanently attacks it with white blood cells. If you only got a little bit, 10, 20, 30 years down the road, it'll have a tumor built around it, right? But you might not get diagnosed for another decade. But then by then it could metastasize and show up everywhere else. So the poll is, did Fukushima nuclear meltdowns release millions of pounds of used fuel rods into the land, sea, and air? Because the official story is... It only lost 2.2 grams. And these models are not based on 2.2 grams of plumes covering the entire planet, right? So do you think 2.2 grams got it there? Do you think it's all gone? And if you think it's all gone, which is four decades of reactor cores, because you don't have a repository in anywhere in Japan, the fuel pools were actually stuffed with overcapacity of reactor cores. And so each of these buildings were probably equal to 20 to 30 Chernobyls. 
Chernobyl was a graphite reactor. It was a brand new reactor. It didn't have any fuel pools at the top of it. Yet they closed 9,400 farms in Ireland and Scotland and United Kingdom. And so, like, Japan released 0 point, 0 0.06 grams of tritium every year. And the apologists said that A lifetime's worth of seafood caught a few kilometers from the nuclear meltdown. Has, and, and the only time they treat them, they only refuse to acknowledge anything else. They have changed their story as of about two weeks ago. Now it's only tritium. Equivalent to one bite of a banana. Imagine saying that, one bite of a banana. So they're saying 0 0.06 grams will be released every year for 30 years. Nothing else got out and it'll be a total of 2.2 grams over 30 years is all that got out of that destroyed building that no longer exists. Like three quarters of the building is actually gone. The top part of the building was the reactor cores and the fuel pools. So why are they making up that particular law when anybody that even has a boo at it will, will have to question that? Well, because nobody can hold them accountable. And so what I'm trying to do, and I've been at this forever, uh, I've, been, I've, I've always had this before Fukushima, of course, but since Fukushima I'm dedicated to this topic, and we flushed this out really good a long time ago, and we're still going strong, and the research expeditions quantifies those assertions. So talking about if you eat fish your entire lifetime, uh, the radioactive fish, it's equal to one bite of a banana. So why would they come out all of a sudden with this particular narrative is, is an intriguing question I got. Right, Because now they understand that they can't hide the fact that the planet is dying and they desperately don't want you looking at the nuclear industry and blaming them. And that's exactly who you need to blame. The blame goes where the blame goes. That's the bottom line. And this industry's 80 years of propaganda 80 years of endless lies have led to this moment. And it's not, ex we can't sit in silence. We can't change what happened. We should consider holding these people accountable at least. And we have gotta close down all the nuclear disease factories known as nuclear power plants. Everything, we can replace all gas, oil, and coal and nuclear with geothermal. It's under everybody's feet. There's enough energy right a few miles under your feet called geothermal. Uh, there's a billion times more energy under our feet than we use currently worldwide in energy. It's easy to do and anybody can do it. You don't even have to. If you a handful of universities wanted to come out with a better way to drill, it would make it even quicker. But they refuse because you don't need storage. There's no adverse side effects. You can't make weapons or anything else. It, it's not going to exterminate the planet. You don't have to abandon parts of your country if it breaks down. The industry has been captured. Now we got 80 years of this capture, generation after generation of evil, of telling the same lies or exasperating those particular lies. And the current generation is completely disconnected. That I call them appropriately the, the entitled bunch because their parents were nuclear scumbags and those parents were nuclear scumbags and their parents were nuclear scumbags, etc. So you got 80 years of this inbreeding. The current generation don't even know what a human is. They grew up privileged. Everything was paid for through the nuclear industry so they can carry on the legacy of their evil, uh, le uh, evil family history. So to suggest that everything is radioactive, what they're trying to do there is conflate natural anthropogenic or natural with anthropogenic man-made radiation. And they've been doing this for 80 years. And this... It's the same lies we cover it every single day, five days a week, year after year. And what we do, we point out, the, we do the recent news cycle and show you how all, how all journalists are corrupt, how every single university is corrupt and is gonna try to propagate you with this propaganda. And we'll show you the evidence to counter the propaganda, typically. And if you hang around for four or five shows, You'd be surprised how incredibly articulated you become on this topic. Because that's what I do, is I make you 
able to defend yourself in in certain ways. You can't defend yourself totally because your 12 years of your 80 years of fallout and 12 years behind a major pulse event that's currently still going. And anybody knows this guy here? <laughs> This is uh, Wade Allison from United Kingdom. And we had a call from England and a call from United Kingdom earlier. And they probably know Wade Allison. He's, he's, a, he's a professor. Now, the universities are anointing lobbyists, nuclear lobbyists, professorships. So, uh, like, you can't, you can't be a professor and actually be honest. You have to be willing to cut everybody's throat. And that's the only way you're going to get a job, a tenor at a university, is if you're going to play ball for a corporation, particularly nuclear. And we've had endless, and I mean endless examples of this every year, year after year after year. But Wade Allison, he's an enigma. He's so evil. He's been doing, and, you know, I, I've done presentations where I asked the question, should Wade Allison's students get a refund, get their money back and have to be re-educated because he's got uh, decades of students that are just as evil as him. And, and like, in order to wrap your mind around that, that, because there's, you know, I can't just sit here and, and recite why I say certain things, but then I, I, I do a lot of times. <clears throat> but I can't give you all the reasons because there's too many to cover on each subject. <laughs> and so, Ty, I'll give you an example. The, the nuclear universities in Taiwan have around 2,200 students. When Fukushima melted down, the 2,200 nuclear students were ordered to go online daily and post propaganda in comments and videos and Twitter and Facebook posts and to denigrate the facts. So they were going in and piping in radiation from Japan is like a banana or is like a potato chip or walking in sunshine or climbing on an airplane or sleeping or flying on an airplane or climbing a mountain or sleeping next to somebody. These, these are completely dishonest um, quotes, right? And this is what the industry has been regurgitating for 80 years. But 2,200 students from Taiwan done that every day for years in class in class, and Taiwan's media eventually called him out on it because it was so evil. Wade Allison done the same thing. He's doing a book tour uh, in South Korea. We covered him over the last couple of weeks. And this uh, Democratic Party of South Korea called him a nuclear crank, which is the appropriate term for Wade Allison. The guy should be locked up for life. They should arrest him immediately, lock that disgusting lawyer, that murderer up for life. He's, he's actually a mass murderer. He says, learn a little science. He's gonna, he equates it with natural, or natural stuff, stuff that's harmless and innocuous, stuff that you're already acclimated through, through genetic superior selection. In an email, he said, treat it, treat it. You can't treat the water from Japan because you can't the filter is not like an uh, uh, oil filter. It's not like a water separator or something like this that you convention like, like a typical one you're, that you're probably familiar with. You're talking about pouring f water over 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures, melted reactor cores. Most of that is going to atomize and aerosol and ionize and radiate and release its radioactive plumes into the environment. But the stuff that's going over the fuel particulates around the site that they're pouring water over and allegedly they're, they're sucking that up and putting it in the tanks, what they're, they admit is 2.2 sieverts per liter. If you try to filter that, by the way, three sieverts is a lethal dose from a short exposure, you'll die within a couple of weeks because it starts to melt your organs and they don't stop melting and you die a few weeks later. If you stay there for like 20 minutes and there's say five liters, at 2.2 sieverts, and they're only acknowledging beta. You gotta, you gotta be smart and include alphas, neutrons, and gammas in that too, because that's what's gonna be there. So a liter is a lethal dose, just walking past it. If you took a five gallon jerry can, like you use for gas, and filled it up with this stuff, 
and put it at a subway in, say, in New York, everybody that walks past it for a million years will die that day. And they'll die, and this might sound very difficult to listen to, they'll, their organs will melt, and they'll squat down, and they'll excrete their organs, their liquefied organs, and that's where you'll find them dead. They'll fall over. Um, and we've seen this after uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki in particular. And this is why only the homeless and the destitute and the victims of society, the immigrants that don't speak the language, are the only people that are working at Fukushima and Santa Susana and Mayak and Three Mile Island and Chernobyl and Sellafield, United Kingdom, and all these other places where they melt down. And these are hemorrhaging into the environment. All fuel pools are splitting atoms. That's what the fuel pools, the reactor cores, are still splitting atoms. Instead of boiling water for a million homes, they're splitting the atoms and water evaporates up to tall, skinny stacks. And that's why they're surrounded by farms. Some elementary scientific knowledge would reveal everything around us is nuclear waste from the stellar nuclear explosions that predated the Earth, Wade Allison said. Some are still radioactive today. So, like, for him to claim that because he's talking about potassium, magnesium. This, these are not, you can't make a dirty bomb out of this stuff. Do you, we're already acclimated to it through genetic superior selection. It's part of our DNA. It's completely harmless. It's completely dishonest and disingenuous to conflate that with, with anthropogenic man-made radiation. It's, it's criminal as far as I'm concerned because people get hurt if they take his advice. The police have no excuses for not arresting him, beating the shit out of him, and having him jailed for life. They really don't have an excuse for not doing that. He's a violent, mass-murdering scumbag. And to conflate and imply that natural is somehow the animosity equivalent of man-made is so dishonest. Is in well, every time that I bring... So the British physicist was accused by the Democratic Party leader of being a quack scientist. Well, he's not being accused. If the journalist that wrote the story had done even a minuscule of research, they wouldn't have quoted Allison. They would have called him a nuclear crank. The journalist who wrote the article should be arrested and flogged and put in jail for the rest of their lives. There is no future. So for Wade Allison to claim that almost the same effect as potassium-40 is what's coming out of Fukushima, the water. Uh, he wouldn't say it to my face, I can guarantee you, that he'd run the other way the minute he'd seen my, my, my face. He knows better than to say something like that to anybody that is not part of the industry. It's despicable, and the university should be closed down for allowing him to produce uh, vicious scum students that are going to go out there and regurgitate that kind of propaganda, noting that it has been with us since the beginning of time. So, like, the reason we call nat uh, the stuff from nuclear reactors man-made is because it's not created by the sun. It's not created by the solar system. They're man-made elements. They're not stardust. We we. We call them man-made because nobody, no species has an autoimmune trigger to defend against it, right? So our body attacks it viciously with white blood cells for the rest of our lives and tries to build a tumor around it. But that, that causes huge problems for your body because your immune system is compromised, so you're more susceptible to pathogens and viruses that were normally harmless. And so the elderly and people, uh, children in particular, are severely impacted by this. And it might not manifest until they're teenagers or young adults, or it might manifest in many, many different ways. There's 1,800 diseases and illnesses and autoimmune deficiencies and injuries. So bananas don't cause these triggers. Uh, natural stuff, potassium doesn't cause them. In fact, you know, p potassium is homeostasis. Your body regulates it like a thermostat regulates the temperature in your home or the cruise control regulates the speed of your vehicle. Your body regulates it. You can only use, have so much potassium in your body at a time. And everything got potassium in it. Literally, my clothing, the cover on the microphone, 
everything around you got potassium to it. It's completely innocuous and benign. And so Allison said, if you drink a liter of the water from Fukushima for the next 12 days, that would double the radiation dose due to the radioactivity inside of you. He's talking about potassium. And so people that quote them should be jailed for at least uh, 50 years. Because any journalist could work this out in a heartbeat. So to put that out there and give them legitimacy, if it was a family member, I'd kick the shit out of them. Despite the fact I couldn't kick the shit out of anybody. I'm, I'm an old man. I'm not healthy enough to do jack shit. But I can guarantee it I'd try if I come across these scumbags. But the world should kick the shit out of them is what I really mean by that. It's infuriating that someone like that is actually equated with a human like me or you. He said, you have to remember you get 10 times as much radiation from outer space. So this journalist who wrote the article is the furthest thing from a journalist. And personally, after all these years of covering journalists, um, it's pretty easy to win a case in court that journalism should be destroyed. There should be no such thing as a journalist anymore. They have abrogated all of their responsibilities and they should all lose their degrees. Uh, that, uh, that discipline should be removed from all institutions and the people that are journalists should have their pensions taken away from them. Should never be allowed in a position of authority ever again. And the majority of them should be, if they wrote about nuclear, should be immediately jailed, minimum of 10 years. Because there's zero possibility they told, they told the truth. You have to remember, we get 10 times as much radiation from outer space. So why did the South Korean journalists quote him without challenging his false narratives, his false assertions? Because that's the industry, they own the medias and the university. They got them captured completely by the 60s. And by the 80s, there was nobody even trying to have a conversation anymore. It was just scum being quoted constantly, like Wade Allison. Spreading lies by inviting quack scientists to the Democratic Party and announcing, announced that drinking one liter of, or 10 liters of the treated water is harmless, is, is mocking, it's shocking. It's, it's unbelievably shocking that somebody would even suggest that. The biggest role of the government is protect the lives and safety of the people. No, the government's job is to do certain functions for the population. Their job, their job is not to protect anybody. Their, their job, they got, they got hired to carry out a function for the population that's, that needs it and is paying for it. All of a sudden, they become, they think they're, as soon as they become a government agency, somehow they're better than everybody. Somehow, because they got credit cards from the government, they got pensions from the government. It's what government employee is a welfare employee, right? They're completely dependent upon wealth. That's welfare. It's the same fucking thing. Excuse the language. A government is disqualified in representing people. It if it deceives the public, intimidates and causes, which is what you've done to me, but it didn't work, obviously, and causes harm while committing acts that threatens the lives and safety of the people. And the following is an email interview with Professor, which he's not, he's not even an adjunct, well, he's an adjunct professor, he's retired. He should be in jail for the rest of his life, starting at least today. There's no reason that he should be allowed in the population. And for the media to imply that he was an acting professor is completely dishonest and disingenuous. Allison said, I did not make a claim or a stated belief. I reported a calculation that anyone can check that the radioactive potassium 40 in his body and everybody else has always been there is quite certainly harmless. Yeah, potassium 40 got no, you can't make, reactors don't make potassium 40. You can't make a dirty bomb out of potassium-40. You can't make fuel rods out of potassium-40. You can't power a light bulb. In fact, you can go potassium-40, you'll find like potassium uh, piles at, at sites that are like hundreds of feet high. You know, if, 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 a, if a truck full of bananas tips over on the highway, you don't have to uh, bring out the hazmat team. 
and to put potassium 40 and obviously the journalist that wrote the article knows this diluting a liter of undiluted fukushima would give me the same radiation dose as potassium 40 but only for two weeks so it would be harmless well again your body can only is homeostasis it regulates the potassium and to use the word potassium is the ultimate betrayal So when he's talking about the active tanks, <sighs> it's really something. Just hang out. So he said if he drinks an active liter of the water, which is two sieverts, and not only acknowledging beta, which is nasty, by the way, but you can't have just beta. So a liter is a lethal dose just being alongside of it. If you drink it, you die right away. It's, it's, it's an insidious suggestion that he just made. It's a revolting it's a hideous, it's, it's not tenable to keep lying like this. They, they don't report on the risk from radiation because people might worry because it's not like potassium, it's not like a banana. Because 11 becquels a kilogram in a child, you start to see heart problems of cesium, for instance. That study was done based on Chernobyl children in Belarus and Ukraine because there's uh, dozens and dozens of orphanages of disfigured and mutated children from radioactive fallout in Ukraine that are abandoned. And you can go into my uh, Netflix, the, what Netflix didn't tell you about Chernobyl video I have on this particular site. So 11 back was a kilogram, you start to see um, holes in the hearts of children. But 50 back was a kilogram. Now, if, at 50 back holes, I can put 200,000 and consider a back hole as an atom. Pulses energy at the speed of light every second forever. Uh, that's pure energy. Gas, oil, and coal emissions. Coal, uh, gas, oil, and coal emissions is carbon. Carbon doesn't pulse energy every second for millions of years. The only thing that does that, and you don't make plumes covering the entire planet, coal emissions and gas, oil, and coal emissions only go about 50 to 100 miles in heavy winds. They don't fall very far, right? And so at 50 becquels a kilogram uh, for adults, you're going to see uh, permanent lesions on your organs. And to put it into context, a becquel being an atom, pulsing energy every second, you can put 200 million atoms on the head of a needle, but you can't see it. And if you get 50 of them in you, if you get 50 of them in you, which you can't perceive it. See, you can't smell it or hear it or feel it or touch it or pick it up or throw rocks at it or perceive it. And whenever anybody tells you like potassium or walking in the sunshine or, or like a banana or a potato chip or something like that, Bear with me, because we're we're off. We're kind of off to show tonight. That don't matter though. I uh, I'm glad we had the callers called in earlier, and they set us on this path. Okay. Well, let's go this route for a second. Because we're, we're in this topic. So when you hear cesium, it's because it's got nothing to do with potassium. <laughs> uh, so radioactive fallout in the Marshall Islands, this is a study from 2019. It's too radioactive people live in a million square kilometers because it's not like potassium. It's not like walking in sunshine. 
It's got nothing to do with what Wade Allison was talking about, right? At two receivers per liter, that's lethal doses. Uh, hard to imagine something more frightening. There was 90,000 children were given dosimeters. And this was in Koryama, Fukushima City, which is over 50 kilometers away from the ongoing multiple nuclear meltdowns and the loss of eight fuel pools. Instead of moving them out, they gave them these dosimeters to measure radiation, but they, they can't read it themselves. Their parents can't read it. They have to send that away to universities because the children are actually lab rats. The average child in Fukushima weight is down 75%. Some children only gained a single pound in a year. Think about those, those types of statements. Radiation forecast withheld by the government releasing would cause panic. A prime minister contemplated evacuating 36 million, actually, because that's how many people in metropolitan Tokyo. The prime minister, which was Nato Khan at the time, contemplated evacuating 36 million people 250 kilometers away. They didn't, even though they were supposed to. They didn't because they didn't want to cause panic and chaos. But they should have evacuated because Tokyo was absurd and still is today and will be for a million years, uh, hideously radioactive. Leader of Fukushima City refused to evacuate the population of 400,000. They have 90,000 homes there that are entitled to be decontaminated, but you can't decontaminate a home. So they should have evacuated it permanently. Not because of the potassium 40, but because of actual radiation. Uh, columnists, they can't neglect the truth because there's fear, a panic outbreak. He said, I'm panicking because there isn't a panic. Radiation forecast, Japan kept secret to avoid panic in the whole of society. They delayed raising the Fukushima to the international scale of seven, uh, one to seven scale, because we could have triggered a panic reaction. But that's why you got sirens, up to 160 sirens around some nuclear power plants, so people can panic and get out of harm's way, right? Photographer in Fukushima, it's a panic there. No gas, no way to escape. Gas stations are closed. The rescues are all gone. The steam coming out of the ground in, in another uh, study was in six places at 10 sieverts per hour. Three sieverts is a lethal dose. Just, but the steam is bioaccumulating. So as the plume expands originally, that's an immediate lethal dose. You die right away. So this is because some of the reactor cores, like of reactor one and two, have went down into the earth and hit the water table. The water expands. It cracks the earth open. And then the steam that's coming up is at lethal doses because it's not like a banana. And before Fukushima, 100 becquerels of cesium is nuclear waste. Well, it was 0 0.1 becquerel a kilogram was considered safe, but that's only because they had a few accidents and weapons folly, right? After 100 becquerels a kilogram of cesium, not only acknowledged in the majority of studies, they only talk about cesium, for instance, because that's the 80 year cover story. And cesium's bad, but that's the cover story for 80 years. But the reactors actually run on uranium plutonium. So 100 becquerels. Uh, 50 becquerels, you adults, for instance, is permanent lesions under organs. It's all downhill after that. And we're not talking about the saturation of the thyroid glands from all the other way. And another marker of radioactive fallout and brain damage is obesity. The obesity rates nearly doubled in the first year in Japan. Japan has one street in Fukushima City where in the first year, seven people dropped dead walking down the street on a single street. I've never heard of anything like that in my life. Radiation forecast can by no means be released to the public. It's like Russian roulette, only 10% of the school's lunches in a nuclear wasteland are checked. And then the incompetence, which is the average person, right? Fukushima farmers hope that ducks will eat up the radiation because they, they, they've been lied to. They got Spider-Man, the Hulk, they got Simpsons, they've been so much propaganda shoved down their throat for so long, they can't comprehend the enormity of the issue. 
right? Because there's no one to educate them. That's why we are dedicated to this particular program, because there's no one to replace us. <clears throat> Actually, I kind of like shows like this where we go off in different directions than what I had planned. The 10 billion times normal fallout in Tokyo. So Tokyo should be, even today, permanently evacuated. Right? To, you have every reason to permanently evacuate Tokyo. Uh, let's go back to the poll for a second, maybe. Did Fukushima nuclear meltdowns release millions of pounds of used fuel rods into the land, sea, and air? Because now they're claiming only 2.2 .2 grams will get out over the next uh, 30 years. So in Fukushima, pre-Fukushima nuclear meltdown was 0.8% of the children had thyroid tumors. Now it's 36%. So it used to be one in a million to two per million children because they have 54 reactors in Japan, right? Now it's 13,646 out of 40, 38,000. So when you scale it up, it's uh, 358,000 out of a million children will have tumors. And the thyroids, which meant the thyroid was saturated with uh, isotopes. So it's not just iodine, by the way, that goes into the thyroids. Any gammas, like cesiums and their daughters, will all go into the thyroid, for instance, also. But what don't go into the thyroid, sequesters in the muscles, the organs, and the bones. And in the dog studies, plutonium in particular, now remember, curium, curium is, uh, you need lead sheeting 20 times thicker than you do for plutonium. So let's just look at how bad plutonium is, and then you can you can scale it up to what curium is actually like. And just to give you context, this was a study by Raymond, Dr. Raymond Gilmetti from Loveless Respiratory Research Institute. Curium isotopes are the major byproduct in irradiated nuclear fuel and compose a significant fraction of the alpha-emitting radionuclide inventories. So this same uh, Raymond Gilmetti from the Loveless Respiratory Research Institute, which is uh, um, um, the Navy. So they kill beagle and dogs, beagle puppies and beagle dogs in their studies. This study was 144 beagle dogs had a single inhalation of plutonium. And deaths from the radiation occurred 1.5 to 4.5. 5.4 years after the exposure. Tumors of the lungs, the skeleton, and the liver. So they had three different types of tumor with a single plutonium isotope. Occurred beginning about three years after exposure. Bone tumors were found in 93 dogs, but the most, and were the most common cause of death. And so in children, when it's in your bone, their bones is mutating their stem cells also. And it's all downhill for that child for the rest of their lives. So liver tumors were in 46 dogs, were the most, second most common cause of death, and lung tumors were found in 20 dogs, were the cause of death in only two dogs, but they, they had uh, multiple tumors from, occurred later than tumors in the bones and the lungs. And tumors in the three organs often occurred in the same animal and were competing causes of death. And they say these findings in dogs suggest similar dose-related biological effects could be expected in humans accidentally exposed to plutonium. Well, everybody was exposed, particularly to Fukushima. So bear with me, because there's another caveat to that. And I'll find it for you in a second, if I don't get... Where would I have, oh, that's down here somewhere. Hang on, we'll find it. <coughs> there it is. So it was discovered that human kidneys are at least 50 times less efficient than animal kidneys at removing plutonium. So 
when they say in the dog studies, you would expect the findings, is actually going to be 50 times worse because the human kidney is 50 times less efficient at removing it than an animal kidney was. So humans are 50 times more susceptible than the dogs were in these studies. And the dogs are 100% susceptible. And they had three separate tumors, right? They had the bone tumors, the lung tumors, and the liver tumors. But they would have had other tumors. That would have metastasized and showed up everywhere else, right? So that's plutonium. But the problem is, curium is the biggest byproduct of the radiated fuel rods. And curium, you need lead shielding 20 times thicker than you do for plutonium. So curium would have been, which is an um, alpha emitter, would have been significant, a significant blow to the species and the humanity, and particularly children. Uh, the industry spent 12 million yen to censor Twitter, which was me, basically, from being spent, but it's, which is 54,000 US. It's just, the industry's entire legacy is predicated upon deceit, deception, misrepresentation, and genocide, and omnicide. Radioactive pollen, Tokyo, up to 2,000 grains inhaled in a cubic meter of air. And this is going to be the same for Canada, United States, too, right? Because we're producing endless radioactive pollen. That's why you see the die off the bees. In fact, I've seen two bees so far this year. Two. An insurance person told me to stay from, away from Fukushima. You may not be able to get life insurance or cancer insurance. A local official said it's better for you to leave Fukushima because the brain neurons don't regenerate. And radiation is in your body is pulsing energy at the speed of light. It wrecks your chromosomes, your DNA, your organs. Your body, every second, is pulsing massive energy from all these different atoms sequestered in your body from radioactive fallout. Nuclear scientists, Fukushima is an apocalyptic disaster will haunt future generations. No, it will exterminate them. We are really on the precipice of a major extinction event. And we've documented it. And how anybody can live in denial is beyond me, right? And so they use this, this mantra of global warming and climate change and, and carbon footprint, which let me just educate you on that particular mantra, where that all came from, and who's using it. So you had uh, Wallace Brocker, you had Miles Allen, you had James Hansen, and you had BP oil. Just give me a second. So Wallace Brocker uh, wrote a paper and, and talked about global warming. So he's the, considered the father of global warming. United Nations, which is a military industrial complex, according to Eisenhower, the New World Order, according to George Bush Sr. Miles Allen, he was the physicist who wrote the paper, and he works for Oxford right now. He wrote the paper on net zero. Uh, BP Oil done a advertisement campaign to blame you for their oil spill, and that's where we got the carbon footprint from. And then you have James Hansen, which is considered the father. He done a single... 15-minute presentation to the American Congress in 1988. And he's the father of climate change. But like he's the, we've covered him hundreds and hundreds of times. He's a uh, scam machine. And this was the cover story for Radioactive Fallout. And his testimony was a turning point in the history of global climate change. It was a pivotal moment and started the official beginning of the climate change global warming policy debate, which, which right, was by the League of Nations, uh, United Nations, which is formally was called pre-Nagasaki Hiroshima the League of Nations. And so they took these four papers, United Nations, which is 195 militaries, and weaponized it into a policy against humanity and the 8 million species, and we are being exterminated. We need to get educated and protect yourselves and hold these people accountable 
and fight for a future for your loved ones and your children and the species. And it's your responsibility. You are, you are obligated. It's your obligation to protect the species. They don't have a voice of their own. And if nobody's going to hold them accountable in the nuclear industry, you can't have a future. Anybody thinks that in 10 years' time, life is going to be the same as it is today or in for a serious shock, we are deep into the precipice of a nuclear extinction event. <laughs> Let me finish up this part. So radioactivity of 14,000 beckles a square meter in race patties can't be sold. No. They picked up 30 million one-ton bags. 30 million, which is only 3% of the land where they wanted to grow food again. They never stopped growing food. They'd done this to justify continuing growing food, but they never actually stopped it. And the only country that would accept it was Canada for the first 10 years. Concerned half of Japan to be covered in nuclear waste, 16 owners should be prepared to die because your power plant broke down. Think about that statement, 60 and older should be prepared to die. Not nuclear scientists, not nuclear academics, not nuclear students, not nuclear corporations, not professors, not, not Wade Allison, not nuclear um, volunteers from other nuclear power plants, no. And TEPCO, send us people who don't mind dying. Does that sound like potassium-40 to anybody? Tokyo Vice Governor suggested a Fukushima draft, like a military draft. All of Japan must face it. So if your power plant, nuclear power plant breaks down, everybody should be sacrificed, except for the nuclear industry. In fact, the Fukushima Prefecture is probably the biggest prefecture in Japan. It was the breadbasket of Aisha just on its own in many ways. It's over a billion pounds of rice a year. And they were shipping that to Canada like crazy. Uh, 1.4 million Beckwells per kilogram. These are catastrophic numbers on a whole different scale. So they're saying everything in the prefecture. Uh, hot terms were, the term hot zones were used to describe Miyagi, Iwati, Tichigi prefecture, not just Fukushima. Resulting destruction will take half the planet with it. So they're talking about and you don't abandon your supermarkets, your schools, your universities, your hospitals, your graveyards, because it's like potassium food, like Wade Allison was claiming, and the rest of them. Top Japanese official, let the elderly people hurry up and die. He was the guy in charge of the people of Fukushima Prefecture after the nuclear meltdown. That's the same guy. So I severely disrespect Wade Allison for what he done, and I disrespect the journalists for putting him on a pedestal. It's revolting, really. It's really. Opposition party against Fukushima water discharge in South Korea? There, so this is meant, there's no way they don't know what I'm showing you. So this is meant to perpetrate the lie that only tritium the tritium is being released. The reactors never stop releasing. It's been a constant, vicious, uh, destructive cycle of uh, releases from that site. It's been going on nonstop 12 years. You can't contain anything. The tanks were built to manipulate you. The, the tanks were built to deceive you. And let me just touch on that, because we're here. <laughs> We might as well finish it up with the rest of it because if you're not familiar, that will bring it all together, hopefully, for you. Let me explain the tanks to you. In some ways. But first, let me explain the filtration process. Because we're almost through the show and we might as well do that. So there was three types of systems. There was the series system for water filtration, the Riva system, which was France's system for the water filtration, and the ELPS system. So 2014, 
the dates on each of these stories are very important, very pertinent to this conversation. TEPCO to abandon the Riva system amid contaminated water crisis. So the Riva system was just like the Alps. It didn't work. For the last three years, the system was unused. The Alps system, 2014, three years later, has yet to function. Well, the problem was, the minute you turn on a filtration system with anthropogenic radiation, the filter, you can no longer change it and you can't get back in the building because the filters need to be six feet thick lead. Otherwise, everybody dies that in 20 minutes' time that walks past it. The groundwater bypass operation didn't work. The, the fence that they were going to build for a billion dollars to stop the radiation from going into the ocean, ocean didn't get built because it was already gone. All the radiation was gone right away. TEPCO's ice wall didn't work. Why would you build an ice wall? A kind of idiotic idea was that. I got a moron. Now, they allegedly had 260,000 people work on the ice wall. Did you hear that? And so the money they had, when you divided it into 260,000 people, meant everybody made around $1,100 if you don't build the ice wall. And why would you build an ice wall when you can build a real wall? The Surrey system, S-A-R-R-Y, uh, 2013, the plant has already released an enormous amount of highly contaminated water directly into the ocean from a plethora of leaks. These are not leaks, these are massive hemorrhaging from the buildings that no longer exist. Tesco, TEPCO's estimate shows that the volume of contaminated water required to be stored on site will likely triple over the next three years. Well, the Siri system, we never even heard tell of that after 2013. It was a complete fable, just like the Riva system, and just like the Elp system. The French told everybody to get out of Japan. EU commissioner called an apocalyptic disaster. The Swiss told, Canadian embassies told everybody to get out of there too. Tokyo lost all control. Nuclear report warns of an apocalyptic scenario at Fukushima in the weeks ahead. It could one day be considered to start at the ultimate cata catastrophe of the world and the planet, and my research expeditions quantifies those assertions, unfortunately. Korea, the, the administration in 2011, called Fukushima's handling incompetent. Today, they're calling them brilliant, the current administration. A thousand years from now, Fukushima water will still be hemorrhaging into the ocean and the air, land, sea, and air. And then water, in this particular one, was water above one sievert per hour. Two years later, work has not been done to this day because of the difficulties. And two years, there was no stuff. There was no leaks. The buildings were completely destroyed. I showed you that at the beginning, right? Uh, did Fukushima nuclear meltdown release millions and millions and millions of pounds? of used fuel rods atomized and aerosoled into the land, sea, and air? Oh, yes, it did, Dana. Thank you, everybody, for participating. And so New Zealand, Australian, and Taiwan experts, they told so much propaganda. They, they were like Wade Allison, always like a banana and a potato chip and stuff like that. Like, how the hell did we ever get to a point where they feel they can just tell whatever lie they want and there's no repercussion? So the question is, did anything get out of these buildings that no longer exist? Which is probably the strangest question you're ever going to hear for the rest of your life. Did anything get out of the buildings to, that you see, reactor three and four? And I, and I showed all four reactors and explained the fuel pools. They're gone too. Each fuel pool at the top of the building were stuffed with decades of reactor cores because they don't have a repository in Japan, let alone anywhere else on the planet. <laughs> so if it's in the tanks, why is the building destroyed? How can, well, I'm sorry, how can the building be destroyed and gone, but yet everything is supposed to be in the tanks? 
how can you have the buildings that ejected the reactor core into the environment straight up in the air and the models and the studies shown radioactive fallout covering the entire planet, but yet everything is in the tanks and they're only going to lose 2.2 grams. Do you think they really lost 2.2 grams? Or do you think they lost millions of pounds? If you're honest, then if you watch the whole show, then you're very educated. You're one of the few people on the entire planet that has a reasonable grip on this topic. And this is the most important topic history will ever have, period. There's literally nothing more important than this topic because it affects every facet of your life and everybody that you love. And if you don't get educated, it's your fault because I'm here to educate you. And I'm, I work like a dog nonstop, seven days a week, 365 days a year, year after year after year. And there's so many people that, that attack me and insult me and ridicule me in order to denigrate the facts because they got no one else to pick on. So you got over a thousand public relation firms over the years that have all tried to gouge the shit out of me and probably most of them succeeded. My reputation has been destroyed worldwide despite the fact that I'm 100% honest 100% of the times. And I always provide the documentations for my assertions because that's the way, only way I can educate people and build up a, so we can have an actual conversation at some point. And 12 years later, I'm still desperately trying to do that. 12 years later, I have been destroyed, but I refuse to give up. I actually don't have the capacity to give up because of what they've done to me. I made a decision that I will never stop doing what I'm doing because they have destroyed everybody's future, not just mine, not just yours. And we are obligated. It's our obligation because we're in the know. And thank goodness is the only thing I can say that we are in the know. We'll do a shout out tonight. Let's do a shout out. I'm going to close down the poll here. Let's close down the poll. It was a great show. We got a few phone calls. We went way down the rabbit hole, climbed back up. Survived another day of the endless radioactive fallout. Did Fukushima nuclear meltdowns release millions and millions and millions of pounds of atomized aerosol used to fuel rods into the land, sea, and air? Yeah, we did, Dana. Thank you. That was a great poll. Thank you, everybody, for participating in that. We got 39 um, votes up. God bless you, folks. Thank you, James. You're, you're, you're amazing. Bless your heart, my friend. Uh, Bubbly Blindy. Dana Nasana. Hi, Dana. Hugs for you, my friend. P. Hug. I'm probably butchering your name. Albert. Good night, everybody. Gabriel. If you made it this far, folks, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. It costs us a little. We might actually go a long way. James Curtis. John Curtis, rather. I'm just going to run up through the names. Quick shout out. Uh, Stephen Young donated $50. Thank you, Stephen. I hope you're doing reasonable today. I know, I know every day is a rough day for you, my friend. Nobby Noble. Which called in, I think it was the second phone call, it was Nobby, I believe. Albert, John Shiflett, Don Vincent, have a great night. Ryan Underwood. Ryan Underwood said there is one reactor still running? No. No reactors were running after Fukushima meltdown started. Well, when the tsunami came in, all the reactors went down at Fukushima and the Dini plant, too, which was the twin, the evil twin. So there's a possibility we'll get on the ocean tomorrow. Now, I was supposed to show pictures from the research expedition, wasn't I? We'll start to show off tomorrow night with pictures because some pretty crazy pictures to get through. I forgot about them. My apologies to everybody. 
We'll show them at the beginning of the show tomorrow night, so that way I don't accidentally forget. And we're just going down through the names. We're almost down through all the names, uh, comments. Another CG. Uh, I know Colette was out there. Hi, Colette. I've seen her comment at the beginning. And Colette is anti-nuclear as they get. And the nuclear industry attacked her for quite a long time when she first started showing up on my site. And that really hurt my feelings that uh, the industry targeted people like that. And that's why we're here today, because the industry attacks everything good. That's all, that's all they're good for. They're, they're really good at attacking everything that is wholesome on this planet. Mindy Patriot Angel. Hi, Mindy. Hope you're doing good. Everybody sitting out there watching this later. Hugs for everybody. We'll see everybody tomorrow night. Have a great day tomorrow. We'll see everybody tomorrow night. I got a long day ahead of me tomorrow. Hopefully I can get on the ocean tomorrow. Uh, today was blown about 45, so I didn't go out. We called it a, I busted up from days on the ocean, right? And we're, we're sucking through fuel. We're down to uh, one tank of fuel left. It's just like 12, well, we, we tapped into the tank to get home. And we'll deal with it. Have a great night. Great day tomorrow. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you made it this far, folks. See everybody tomorrow. Take care now. Take care, folks. We'll see everybody on the next show.